In the chilling chronicle of Sniper's demise, the brutality inflicted upon him was nothing short of a gruesome masterpiece. This tale begins with Sniper, a man known for his activism and sharp words, caught in the cruel clutches of his assailants. As he stood against the storm of aggression, he was met with a relentless barrage of blows. Each slap, each punch, a stinging testament to the brutality he was enduring. His pleas for mercy, a desperate symphony, echoed in the hollow air, only to be drowned out by the deafening sound of heartless laughter. As the violence escalated, his tormentors found a new tool to increase his suffering. They bound his hands and legs, the ropes digging into his skin, leaving behind cruel indentations that would later tell tales of his struggle. The ropes, harsh and unforgiving, were reminiscent of Sisal, or the straps of a traditional Kiondo. They tightened their grip around his wrists and ankles, amplifying the anguish etched across Sniper's face. The assault continued, the blows raining down on him like a tempest of hatred. His body, battered and bruised, bore the brunt of this unending onslaught. His spirit, however, remained unbroken. In the face of such relentless adversity, Sniper's resolve did not waver. His spirit fought back, refusing to yield to the tormentors, but his pleas for mercy fell on deaf ears. His cries for help were met with cold indifference. The ropes around his hands and legs tightened, their grip becoming more relentless, intensifying the pain that was already unbearable. The marks they left were indelible, a brutal testament to his futile struggle for survival. His face, once a canvas of resolve and determination, now bore the anguished expression of a man facing an unthinkable ordeal. His pleas for mercy fell on deaf ears as the ropes tightened their grip, amplifying the anguish etched across Sniper's face. This was the beginning of the end, the opening act of a gruesome masterpiece that would forever mark the death of a man who dared to speak truth to power. The pangs of hunger gnawed at him, the post-mortem later revealing an empty stomach, a cruel companion to his already dire situation. His strength was dwindling, his spirit faltering, yet his tormentors were far from done. Their intent was not just to kill, but to inflict pain, to terrorize, to strip him of his dignity and humanity. As the sadistic symphony of his torment continued, a new instrument of cruelty was introduced. His mouth, once a vessel of eloquent words and impassioned pleas for justice, was filled with coarse, dry construction sand. The grains invaded his mouth, an unwelcome intruder, robbing him of the ability to speak, to cry out, to swallow, or even to spit. The sand was a silent yet sinister player in this morbid orchestra. Each grain was a silent testament to the brutality inflicted upon him, a microscopic witness to a grotesque crime. The sand, more than a hundred grams of it, later found in his trachea, was a chilling testament to the malevolence that unfolded. But the tormentors did not stop there. A cloth was then fastened over his mouth and nose. This was not a merciful act to shield him from the taste of the sand, but a cruel method to ensure its imprisonment within him. The cloth, like a jailer, held the sand captive in his mouth, ensuring that his pleas for mercy were muffled his cries for help silenced. His cries for help became a desperate symphony, a cacophony of pain and despair. But this symphony was not heard by compassionate ears. Instead, it was silenced by the sadistic decision to fill his mouth with construction sand, robbing him of the ability to speak, swallow, or spit. And so, still bound and gagged, Sniper's desperate symphony was abruptly cut short. His voice, once a beacon of truth and justice, was silenced. His pleas for mercy, his cries for help, were all drowned out in this cruel symphony of torment. The brutality escalated as a forceful foot stomped on his chest, each blow a reminder of the cruelty Sniper endured. This was not an act of self-defense, nor could it be mistaken for a mere scuffle. This was cold, calculated brutality, the kind that's born out of deep-seated hatred and the desire to inflict pain. Every thud of the boot against his chest was a deliberate act of violence, each one echoing the mercilessness of his attackers. His ribs, those faithful protectors of the heart and lungs, strained under the relentless pressure, bearing the brunt of the assault with a stoic resilience. The tormentors, not satisfied with merely crushing his chest, sought to snuff out his life force. The means? Strangulation. A method as old as time yet as brutal as ever. 
Ropes or perhaps a wire were transformed into a tool of execution. The biting pressure around his neck, the chilling sensation of life slipping away, the desperate gasps for air that would never come, all culminated in an agonizing dance with death. Sniper's fight for breath was a futile one. The ropes tightened, each twist a step closer to the end. His body writhed in protest, his eyes wide with a primal fear that only the face of death can elicit. Yet the noose only tightened, its grip unwavering, its intent clear. His tormentors watched, their faces masked by a chilling indifference as they witnessed life drain from his eyes. They felt no remorse, no hint of guilt as they extinguished the flame of a man who had once been full of life. Their act was one of cowardice, their victory a hollow one. The noose tightened, sealing Sniper's fate with a merciless finality. His body lay still, the struggle over. His soul had been released from its mortal coil, freed from a world that had shown him the ugliest side of humanity. His death was not in vain. His memory lives on, a testament to the unyielding spirit of those who fight for justice, for those who refuse to be silenced. In death, they believed they had a secret to bury along with Sniper's lifeless body. But the truth has a way of surfacing, no matter how deep the grave. The gruesome tale of Sniper's demise has sparked a fire that refuses to be quenched, a relentless pursuit of justice. This pursuit is fueled by the harrowing details of Sniper's last moments, each mark on his body, every grain of sand, a testament to his torment. It's a quest driven by those who refuse to let Sniper's voice be silenced, even in death. They are the justice-seeking hearts, the unwavering voices that rise against the monstrous act committed. The fight for justice is a daunting battle, a journey riddled with obstacles. It's a path littered with perpetrators wielding connections, wealth, and the power to bury the truth. But the pursuit remains steadfast, the rallying cry for justice echoing louder each day. No matter the perpetrator's connections, wealth, or attempts to bury the truth, the rallying cry for justice remains unwavering.